Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to Jim's 5am club. I'm fighting back the tears because uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night from 8 o'clock till 12 o'clock midnight, the sails on the magnificent Opera House will be lit up with the flag of, uh, of Greece. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to come down here to find one of the many, many beautiful vantage points to watch the uh, Opera House express itself in all its beauty, covered in the Greek national flag. Anyway, let's go on a walk and talk. It's 5.30 in the morning. The rain has magically disappeared and uh, it's going to be a cracker, a cracker of an autumn day. It's still, it's uh, mild and uh, it's peaceful, very, very peaceful. Peaceful after the rain, peaceful after the flooding and uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day or two. And I can't wait. Tomorrow night, I've got tickets to uh, the town hall where I'll be going to uh, watch a performance with my beautiful wife, Paula, a performance of the Hymn of Liberty, where uh, the national anthem of Greece, which is uh, made up of uh, more than a hundred verses or stanzas will be performed. And uh, one of the main performers that performance, performers at that concert is a dear friend of ours, Leon. And we can't wait, can't wait to see him perform. And it's going to be a magical, magical performance. Anyway, let's, uh, let's do a walk and talk. And I've just, uh, gone through a book summary on the bus on the way into work and I want to cover a book entitled Rewire by Richard O'Connor. What I'll do is I'll go up there onto uh, the little platform above the key restaurant and deliver this special edition of Jim's 5am club from up here because there's hardly a breath of air it's clear, as I said before, and absolutely glorious. Sydney at its absolute finest. Look at the lights, look at the Harbour Bridge up there. So let me just take the steps and we'll uh, do our best. Actually, it's a bit dark up here. I don't think I'll be able to read my notes, believe it or not. Let's just have a quick look and I'll go back down there where there's some light. But as you can see, the view from here is simply magical. Tonight, tomorrow night, sorry, that opera house will be lit up in the glorious colors of the Hellenic Republic, which celebrates 200 years of independence. Well, let's go down and get some light and we'll do this book summary. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for staying with me for this wonderful journey that I commenced back in May last year when we were locked down. I asked myself, what could I do to be productive, to be able to uh, help myself and others um, get through the lockdowns and the thought that came to me was to deliver a 5 a.m. club. Anyway, here we are, we've got some light here. So uh, what's this book all about, Rewire? Uh, Rewire is all about learning a little bit more about ourselves and what makes us tick. And the author here kicks off the book with a wonderful quote where he says that you know very well what the right choice what the right choice is, yet we keep on making the wrong choices in our lives. 
and this book's all about trying to understand the mechanics behind that, what causes that behaviour, that uh, sabotaging behaviour that we all have at various times of our lives and uh, we all need to understand this a little bit better because uh, Richard O'Connor, the author, is a psychotherapist who uh, has spent many years analysing and helping people get through their self-destructive behaviours and learn how to uh, manage those behaviours and to get the best out of their lives. The author goes on to instruct us and teach us that we have two selves that influence our actions. We've got a conscious self and we've got an automatic self. Two very, very different parts. We've got a yin and a yang, um, a positive, a negative, a conscious, a subconscious, uh, depending on how you see it. But there are two different parts that make us up. And the conscious self relies a lot on rationale and logical argument. So our logical, our logical self, our conscious self, is, depends a lot on our logic and our rationale. On the other hand, we've got an automatic self, which uh, runs on emotion and feeling, and uh, usually is in charge. So our automatic self is our instinctive self, and it's our go-to self our self that just happens without us thinking about it, without us knowing about it. We just do things, even though we've thought about doing other things where we know what is right and wrong, somehow we always seem to automatically just revert to our automatic self and just do things, even though those things that we're doing aren't empowering or leading us down the right path. And what happens is that after we express our automatic self and do the things that feel good and just, just do it, our, our rationale or our conscious self kicks in and assesses the consequences of our actions. And that's where we start to develop our deep regrets and wonder what the hell were we thinking when we had that 10th drink or what the hell were we thinking when we, uh, we did whatever we did only to uh, realise that it was a, a dumb thought in hindsight. Um, so our bad habits are instincts and are, initi are initiated by feelings and, uh, and are not initiated or managed by logic or rationale. And even if we were able to manage it through logic and rationale, what the author says here is that uh, our, our self-power, our willpower, the thing that we call willpower, ends up getting used up throughout the day because we make hundreds and hundreds of decisions. And sooner or later, our willpower runs out of steam and we just revert to feeling good or whatever feels good or we think will make us feel good and make it the dumb decision to do something which of course isn't the right thing but it was the right thing at that point in time based on what we thought would feel good but it ends up being a dumb decision anyway. So how do we sort this out? How do we sort ourselves out? How do we sort the people around us out? The author says that we need to strengthen our conscious self and learn how to train our unconscious self to stop slipping up wherever we can. So what, what else does this author teach us? The other important thing that we need to understand and to uh, appreciate is that when we repress emotions, it can cause us or it can lead us to a path of self-destruction and, and having habits and behaviours which is self-destructive because emotions are chemical reactions in our body which build up over time. 
And like water, like water trickling into a bathtub, sooner or later it will uh, overflow and overfill and start spilling over. So one of the key messages from this author is that we need to not bottle up our emotions, to accept them, to appreciate them, to let them flow, but to, uh, and also to understand that they're neither right nor wrong, but we need to try and channel them so that we don't have destructive behaviors, uh, ruining our relationships, ruining our work, ruining our tomorrows, because at the end of the day, one stupid thing that you may want to, that you may do, may stuff up your your wedding, may stuff up your friendships, may do a lot of damage, uh, which is ir irreparable. So one thing we need to do is to try and uh, manage these emotions and surf these emotions and bad behaviours as best as possible. Because what happens is we have a cognitive dissonance where our brain is mixed up and our conscious and subconscious are out of kilter and there's a gap that exists between our logic and our feelings. And uh, a repressed emotion may lead to some other bad habits. You know, sometimes when you don't do things, when you, people stop you expressing yourself, it may lead to other bad habits such as smoking, you know, reaching for that cigarette, drinking, you know, reaching for a beer or a, a glass of wine or three, overeating, you know, that's, that's my go-to. If I'm emotional, if I get stressed, I'll tend to overeat. And other people re revert to things like cheating or, you know, blocking out their world or you name it. There's a lot of bad habits that people go to when they repress their feelings. So the, uh, the, mo the, the motto or the, uh, the moral to the story, according to this author, is that we need to listen to our gut. And uh, how do we solve this? The author says that uh, we can start by breaking bad habits by using the alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous motto of faking it until you make it. And also incorporating mindfulness training. So uh, the important thing is that we don't beat ourselves up the message from this book is you don't beat yourself up, else you will sabotage yourself somewhere else. Because sooner or later, uh, emotion will flow and will, will need to uh, express itself and need to uh, depressurize itself. And uh, it's best that you do it in a controlled fashion rather than in a random, chaotic fashion. So how do we train our, ourselves to get mindful so that we can get in, in, into the moment, so we can get present and we can manage these bad habits or these bad emotions or these bottled up emotions. The author says that maybe you can consider prayer, meditation, focus on your breathing, slow things down, breathe it out. And, uh, and most importantly, not to worry not to put too much emphasis and not to worry about being perfect because when you're meditating, when you're sitting back and, and relaxing and chilling out, when you're chill, chillaxing, uh, the author says that don't worry about being perfect, but focus on pushing the thoughts that flow in and through you, flow, flow, get them to flow aside and uh, and to just refocus your attention from time to time until you slowly get through and over those disempowering emotions that you may be feeling. So there you go. Thank you very much for joining me on this magnificent morning, the day after the storms, the day before the 25th of March, which is Greek Independence Day. It's the bicentenary. 
200 years since the Greeks uh, bravely decided and boldly uh, um, um, got together to relieve themselves of 400 years of uh, Ottoman rule. And it was one of the very, very few countries to maintain its language, its culture, its authenticity, because many countries were uh, enslaved to uh, Islam and to the Ottoman rule and never recovered and uh, never regained their Christian roots. But thank God for the mighty Greeks, they were able to do it after 400 years. So to my uh, indigenous friends, my indigenous brothers and sisters, indigenous Australia, always remember that there is always a way and if the Greeks were able, after 400 years, to wrestle back the, uh, the ownership and the, uh, the sovereignty of their own country, then nothing is impossible. Where there's a will, there is a way. So uh, I look forward to seeing the Greek national flag uh, presented on the sails of the Opera House a building that was built back in the 60s and there were Greeks who were builders who were part of that this magnificent project who were there who were eating working laughing singing dancing and to think that uh, they may not be no longer with us but to think that their spirit is part of that building and tonight their spirit will be and uh, 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 emboldened and will come alive in the beautiful colours of the blue and white with the Greek Orthodox flag, with the cross of Christianity, the cross of Orthodoxy, and to know that their efforts were never in vain. Our parents' efforts were never in vain. All of those who wonderful people who came before us their efforts will be respected, will be highlighted tomorrow and, uh, and to be very, very proud because at the end of the day, the Greeks have on many occasions been the, uh, the shelter, have been the, the buffer, the buffer zone for Western civilization and for the freedom of democracy and, uh, and to know that those efforts were never in vain. Take care, everybody. I look forward to catching up with you again. I'll head back to work. I'll finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel great. Zito, Eleftheria, Zito, to Ethnos, Zito, Yelava. And I look forward to spending some time um, at the town hall tomorrow night, um, indulging and enjoying the hymn of liberty. So to all my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable, stay proud. Long live Greece, long live democracy, long live freedom, and may our children and get grandchildren live well into the future and look back and be proud and to be, uh, and to be honored to be linked to a lineage of fine people and to a deep and beautiful culture that has stood the test of time and will stand tall forever and a day. Yasas, bye for now. If you like it from Jim's 5am club, get the leme avrio. Yasas. Bye-bye.